Very excited to be here. My name is Lynn. I'm a type designer and letter form artist. My name is Kevin. I'm a software engineer. And we both run a design studio and type foundry called Space Type, based here in Brooklyn, New York City. Along with each of our unique skills, uh, we are both creative technologists and educators. And with that, we have the unique combination of being fluent in the visual and the digital. We do the more traditional work of making typefaces and making websites, of course, uh, but we have a lot of fun when they come together. Um, here, we, you can just see a lot of the sketches that we've done uh, while just having fun, um, making letter forms that people can experience and interact with. And we think this intersection of type and technology um, is just so, so important and, and interesting to us because it allows us to uh, experience digital type in a way um, where they feel alive and a little bit malleable um, and, and, and just a lot of fun. I keep saying that, but it's true. <laughs> Um, and before we share some exciting things that we've been doing with variable fonts, I wanted to frame the conversation by introducing the idea of the uh, design space that variable fonts gives us access to. Um, so let's sort of look at how we interact with uh, digital uh, font formats. Um, so, so you can kind of think about any um, scenario where you're typing a letter on any sort of app that you have on your desktop. And if you think about how you just like type a letter A and it appears on the screen, um, it seems instantaneous, but there's a process that is happening. So for uh, most keyboards, uh, they have little chips that tell the, uh, you know, like the computer what key was pressed. Um, so uh, when you press a capital letter A, the keyboard transmits a Unicode, the code uh, that signifies uh, the glyph that it was uh, tied to, let's say. And so a capital letter A uh, sends out a signal of 65. And when um, our computer sees uh, that code, it sort of looks up whatever outline is encoded um, in the space called 65 in a font file. So whatever font file um, it brings up, uh, it will sort of like show that outline that corresponds to that Unicode. And so that is happening uh, in a split of a second that you don't even realize. Um, but I think there is a lot of takeaways from here um, in the sense that it just brings out whatever is encoded in that uh, spot, right? Like in the font file. Um, and so the way that it brings it up is that it's just a series of instructions. Um, so if we think about any sort of digital type that we may have drawn, we just sort of think about like, oh, like I use a pen tool and I plotted some points um, in a row. Um, and it made a letter. And a font file is exactly the same. Um, it's just a series of coordinates uh, where like the font file uh, has the series of instructions that say, oh, go to this point and then go to the second point, go to the third point, go to the fourth point and so on and so forth until the outline is done. Um, and so it is just a series of instructions uh, that go from one point to another. So it's just a very malleable thing at the core of it. So you can like think about a static, a, tr a static font file, like a traditional font file where it only has one style and one weight um, as having just one set of instructions. And then you can think about a format such as a variable font. Um, it has uh, multiple recipes in it. Um, and so we refer them to them as like axes where we sort of think about the traditional, uh, traditional is kind of, <laughs> uh, variable fonts has, ha haven't been around for too long. Uh, but like when we think about a variable font animation, we kind of think about like this like very skinny letter, like whoop, and then that turns into a bold letter and then whoop, like it's like now italic, um, you know, like all these like whoosh whoosh animations. Um, it's possible because a variable font file has uh, multiple recipes. Um, and so if we're sticking with this, like, uh, a numbered outline analogy, uh, we have this idea that like um, an A can turn into, an upright A can turn into a slanted A because all these points uh, know where they uh, could be going in order to uh, go to like one end of the design space to another end of the space. And you can um, kind of imagine the more axes there are, the more recipes there are, and the more spaces that you can explore uh, within um, this like, you know, this like small font file, which is like very exciting. Um, and you know, that's what makes variable fonts very cool. And with that, I will hand it off to Kevin. Awesome. Thanks, Lynn. Um, so Lynn and I wanted to, to share a project that we've been thinking about for a little while. 
Um, and uh, some context is, you know, we've been working with variable fonts um, and teaching them in our classes and workshops. Um, and so we wanted to build an open tool uh, that allows uh, people to test new and existing fonts. Um, and there are a lot of great resources already online uh, to, you know, work with variable fonts and inspect them. Um, but we really wanted to allow people to visualize their designs um, in more of a kinetic lens. Um, so it's really, if you look at it, it's really more of like a type specimen generator almost, uh, where people can upload their font files, uh, then automatically see them uh, in the context of these kinetic sketches uh, that we're providing them. Uh, and what I love about variable fonts uh, in general is that, uh, you know, they can be plugged into a lot of the existing tools we use on the web today. Uh, so some of what you'll see here is just done through uh, CSS layouts and animations, and no JavaScript. Um, and you can see already in this sketch uh, how variable fonts uh, really allow us to express fluid and organic movements uh, without a lot of effort on our part uh, as someone who's just trying to use it on the web. Um, this is a wonderful typeface, uh, soon to be released by our friends at uh, Fairtype. And um, here we're, uh, again, just using CSS layouts and animations. Uh, now we're kind of going into a, a more grid format. Um, and uh, you're getting these nice fluid edges on the grid. Uh, so something that was once really rigid, um, just type uh, in rows. Um, now we're able to take uh, variable font axes and play around with them uh, in order to really humanize it and to give it personality. Uh, we can also use variable fonts uh, in more of a reactive, interactive uh, sense. Uh, so here we're just using some simple hover states, um, again, just use CSS, um, and we're able to provide some interaction uh, with the viewer um, so people can hover over the text um, and just get some different uh, text going. Um, and here you can imagine the interaction might be um, on navigation bars or um, other places on your web page uh, where you want people to kind of be attracted to it and to play around with it. Uh, really allows us to be uh, kind of flexible for our designs and to, to build with accessibility in mind as well. Um, if you want to change like optical size, um, you can kind of use that uh, with variable fonts. Um, and here you can also see um, we can start to uh, use variable font axes um, in a way that is responsive uh, to kind of the context of, of where it's being seen. So you might see it on like a mobile browser um, and uh, you might try and fit your variable font that way. Um, or someone might have a super crazy, uh, super wide desktop um, and whatever they have uh, in the near future, um, you know, you'll be able to, to adapt your font to that. Um, and we use uh, a lot of creative libraries, uh, like P5 as well. Um, so, so here we're starting to introduce some JavaScript, um, and uh, we really started to incorporate variable fonts in our process as well. Um, so you can make your type uh, react to sound. Uh, so this is a really fun sketch that Lynn and I like to play with a lot. Um, <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, and you can also uh, take variable fonts uh, text and break it down into uh, more of like a pixel-based uh, image. Uh, so here, uh, if you actually zoom in, uh, we've taken this text and we've actually turned it into emojis. Uh, so it's a lot of fun to just play around and, uh, you know, we're trying to find uh, ways where, you know, the designer has uh, designed this space uh, for us to play around with. Um, and then we're taking that space and we're, uh, take, you know, putting our own spin on it. Um, and finally, uh, this is kind of early work that we're doing. Um, we're just trying to take variable fonts and uh, bring it into the 3D space as well. Um, and folks like, you know, Andrew Johnson have been working with 3D type for years, uh, especially in the augmented and virtual reality space. Um, Beatrice Lozano, have, uh, she's been coming out with some really beautiful AR type sculptures recently. Um, and so, yeah, the, the field is really wide open still um, in terms of how variable fonts can be used. Um, within those environments. Um, but we're really excited to, to kind of see everything that's coming out um, and everything that's come before us as well. Um, and, you know, we're, we're excited to, to kind of see uh, what people do with variable fonts and uh, to see it more widely adopted. Um, so yeah, hopefully that kind of uh, gives you a taste of, of what we're doing with variable fonts um, and, and gets you excited about the te te technology um, and uh, what's possible there.
Um, so uh, yeah, that's us uh, and kind of some of the work that we're doing, um, Space Type Co. Um, yeah, thanks for thanks for listening and excited to, to talk to everyone. Yeah, very excited. Thank you.